it shall be said, build up, build up, prepare the way, remove every obstruction from my people's way. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with those who are contrite and humble in spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. For I will not continually accuse, nor will I always be angry. For then the spirits would grow faint before me, even the souls that I have made. Because of their wicked covetousness, I was angry. I struck them, I hid and was angry. But they kept turning back to their own ways. I have seen their ways, but I will heal them. I will lead them and repay them with comfort, creating for their mourners the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to the far and near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, 
and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home. When will he come? And how will he come? And will there be warnings and will there be thunders and rumbles of armies coming before him and banners and trumpets? When will he come and how will he come and will we be ready? Oh, woe, you people. You sleep through the thunder and heed not the warnings, the fires and the drownings, the earthquakes and stormings and ignorant armies and dark closing on you. The songbirds are falling, the seabirds are dying, no fish now are leaping, the children are choking in air not for breathing, the aged are gasping with no one to tend them. A bright star has blazed forth, and no one has seen it, and no one has awakened. Hard to believe that poem was written in 1971 by Madeline Langle. The aged are gasping with no one to tend them. We could certainly make our own list to weave into her poem. The poor are getting poor and no one seems to care. Work two or three jobs just to put food on the table and someone will call you a taker and a loser. Outcasts are invisible. No one even recognizes their humanity. A world is divided. Fear is on the rise, and hope is missing in action. Even in Mary's day, it would have been a very similar list. Roman soldiers walked the streets of Nazareth. Lepers and beggars were untouchables. The poor went into lifelong debt just to be able to farm their land. And if you thought taxes were high now, just be really glad you did not live then. You'll be doubly glad you were not a woman then who may have had no male family member to watch over her and be responsible for her or a child without a family or you would find yourself on the streets begging for handouts just for food to survive. Madeline La Engel said, a bright star has blazed forth and no one has seen it, and no one has wakened. But Mary saw it, and Mary was awakened. In her day, a woman in her position, married with a child not of her husband, she would have been taken outside the town by the town elders and stoned to death. And yet Mary sang a song of power. She sang of God's promise fulfilled, not God's promise to come, but God's promise fulfilled in the here and now. She did not entertain the idea that she had to hold out hope for that day when the powerful would be brought low and the lowly would be lifted up. She sang as if that were already done. She sang. Not as if one day the hungry would be filled with food and good things, but as if this, as this had already happened. God was already in the process of feeding the hungry and lifting up the lowly. Now, Mary was not naive. She knew what the world was like. She knew she still faced danger because of her pregnancy. Jump over to Matthew's gospel and you see that Joseph was very much aware of the danger to him and Mary because of this unusual, unexpected pregnancy. She knew that Joseph still had to work long hours just to make enough to get by. But she still sang like one who lived in an entirely different world. She sang as one who already knew the ending of this world we live in right now. The rest of the world just hadn't seen it yet. They just hadn't woken up. But Mary saw, and Mary knew. Now, I'm not sure when she really knew. I'm not sure she really knew it when Gabriel came and told her, oh, by the way, I know you're, you're engaged, but you're going to be pregnant, and Joseph isn't the father. I'm, you know, it's going to be God. I'm not really 
convinced in that moment she knew what that meant. I could only imagine she was probably somewhat in shock and uh, denial, perhaps, regardless of how idyllic the gospel stories make it sound. But when she visited her cousin Elizabeth, who was in her old age and barren, and the child in Elizabeth's womb who would be born and be John the Baptist leapt, she knew then. And that's when she sang. She sang a defiant song of joy about the complete reversal of the entire social order. Again, not because it had already been accomplished but because she knew the end of the story and in defiance of the world that she experienced it, she sang about the world that was coming. It's amazing how knowing the end of a story, knowing what's coming can change how we live in the present. Just because Jesus was born didn't mean Mary's life was going to be a walk in the park. In fact, far from it. She had to face the arrest, torture, and execution of her son. But in that moment with Elizabeth, a light burst forth, and she had a glimpse of the world that was coming, and it framed the way she looked at and experienced the world from that moment on. It was that same burst of light in the Apostle Paul's life that he held on to and that shaped his life and the way he faced his arrests and his beatings and his tribulations as he shared the good news about Jesus Christ with the world. It was that same burst of insight that exploded in Tiananmen Square in June 1989 when one million students dared to challenge the authority of the entire Chinese government. Now, it is easy to say that that was a wasted effort. On June 4th, the government moved in with tanks and machine guns and foot soldiers and estimates of the death toll range from a few hundred to a few thousand students that single day. But we remember that day not because of the deaths. We remember that day because of an iconic moment that actually happened the next day, one day after those deaths, a young man in a white shirt stood face to face with a line of at least a dozen tanks, and he stopped them in their tracks. That is a picture of defiant joy, a picture of someone who dares to believe that no matter what the government throws at them, no matter the suffering that is brought about, he knows it is worth it because he knows in the end who wins. He knows the end of the story. I think what's difficult for us is we hear about the end of the story. We hear about what God's going to do to tear down the, the proud and lift up the lowly and to send the rich away hungry and provide food for the poor. Uh, we hear the stories of peace on earth and the day when uh, nations shall not learn war anymore. We, we've grown up with those stories and we've heard them over and over and over. We know the end of the story, but it's not here yet. Rome continued to rule Palestine until long after Mary died. Freedom is still elusive in China, and even in our own nation, our own city, our own home sometimes. There are still vast gaps in our relationships. The divisions between us keep growing wider and wider, and hate seems to be becoming more common in all of those places. So Mary sings of a world that we still dream about. We still dream of a world where we don't have to be worried about tomorrow. We still dream of that world where we could just live together in peace and not be afraid, where we can support each other, where, where we could all have what we need. 
But the reality is there's a huge gap between the promise and our reality. That's why we talk about defiant joy and not just joy. Defiant joy says, I know the world is not what we hope for yet, but it's coming and nothing's going to stop it. We know it's coming because God has already started the transformation. We know it's coming because Mary sang. We know it's coming because a lone man dared to have the guts to stop a tank. We know it's coming because we have seen glimpses of that world that we sing about, that Mary sang about, even in our present day. And we know it's coming because we know how God has changed us. Let's be completely honest. The world that Mary sang about, the world we hope for, is only going to happen when we are changed when we start to live differently. Because God can put everything in place for a perfect world, but if it is populated by people like us who still have our moments of selfishness and greed and when our hate and anger still boils over to the point where we're hurting other people, then we're not going to have this world that Mary's singing about and that we so long for. If we really want that world, we have to be willing to be changed. And God is about that. We have seen it in the lives of our family and friends, those bursts of light, beams of light that say, here's a glimpse of the kingdom. It may not be here in its fullness right now, but here's a glimpse of it. It's here in just a little bit, in this place, and in this moment. The picture Mary sings about can't happen without us. Because if we don't change, nothing will change. Jesus was born to a poor family from backwater town, and by all rights, he should have amounted to absolutely nothing. And yet, coming from that meager, poor background, he still showed by how he lived what this new world looks like. And he showed us that we have the power to live in that world right now. He showed us what it was to love and be loved. He showed us what it was to lift others up. He showed us what it was to have compassion, to share, to forgive, to have mercy. And he basically told his disciples, this world that you long for, that you want, that Mary sang about, it's here whenever and wherever you do those things. The gap between what Mary sang about and our reality closes and gets smaller and smaller every time we make a choice to live in that new reality, to let, to let this song shape how we live and how we interact and what we do. Mary's song is a song of defiance. She knew what was coming, and she announced it to the world. A light has broken into the world, and she sang so others could see it. The young man who stared down a tank sang a song of defiance. The government may have won that particular battle, but he was singing at the top of his lungs that he refused to live by their rules anymore because he knew the world he dreamed of was possible. Now, do you know how dangerous it is when people believe in what's possible? The Chinese government knows they have banned any mention of the tank man, as he has come to be called. They will not let that day be celebrated. They will not let his picture be shown. They are afraid if people remember what's possible, they will wake up. They are afraid if people hear that song, they will wake up. 
Mary's song isn't about wishful thinking. It's about making a choice. What world do you want to live in? What world do you believe in? We declare by how we live what we believe and what our choice is. Do we believe that God has opened the way for us to experience life differently? Do we believe that God hears the cries of the heart? Do we believe that God and all of God's power is available and within us? If we believe that, what, what will it take us to live like we believe that? Will we sing a song of defiant joy? Will we dare to sing a song of defiant joy? Will we dare to declare to the world that there's a new world order coming, but it starts right now and no one can stop it? Not all the armies in all the world. If we're willing to sing that song, and if we're willing to make the choice to live in that world even now, then let's do that. Let's continue to work for God's kingdom on earth. Let's lift up the brokenhearted. Let's demand justice. Let's practice compassion. Let's give forgiveness. Let's share from our abundance. Let us bring that reality a little closer to our reality. Mary's song was a sign of hope for the world. We've, we've been singing it for 2,000 years. What if our lives were the same? What if the way we live becomes our song of defiant joy that gives hope to those who have given up, who don't believe that the world can be any different than what they see right now? What if the song of our lives saves someone else's life? We know it's coming. We know what can be. We may not be able to sing the song perfectly right now. But you know, if we don't try to sing it, who will? A bright star has blazed forth, and we have seen it, and now we are awake, and the world will never be the same.